Hi, welcome to Dragon Way Farm. My name is Ginger. If this is your first time visiting, welcome. I'm really glad you stopped by and I hope you enjoy this and you'll stop by again, become a regular visitor. Today we're talking about chicks. This is one that I just hatched out this week. It's an Americana, probably Lavender Orpington cross. Very healthy. He just hatched out either Tuesday or Wednesday. Our first hatch was on Monday and it kind of lasted until Thursday, the last one hatched. Um, chick season is actually uh, quickly coming to an end. Most hatcheries will stop um, will stop hatching out chicks in October. Oh, <laughs> he kind of wanted to go away with his friends. Here's another little one that we hatched out. This one is probably a leghorn cross. So I have a, a white leghorn rooster and two lavender orpington roosters that are running with um, my main flock which is consisted of buff orpington lavender orpington um i have some americanas and uh, an isa brown in there so they could be crosses of all of those but this guy's pretty cute so like i said it's now september 3rd and um chick season is quickly coming to a close which is unfortunate most people get excited about uh, chicks hatching in february that's when everyone starts first hatching them out and these guys are are about the age that you would get them if you if you ordered chicks online and they hatched out and you got, picked them up at the post office this is about the age that they would be three two or three days old and in february and march you're not gonna let them outside but here they are outside on a beautiful day like today. So I think that brooding chicks in the summertime is great. You don't have to worry about them freezing. They get to go out and be chicks, be chickens a lot sooner, which is really cool. So maybe you're already thinking about uh, expanding a flock next year or starting a flock for the first time and you're wondering what your options are for, for starting chickens. Most people do start out with um, day old chicks. So you would go to a hatchery or online and, and order some day old chicks. And by the time they reach you, they might be two or three days old, about this size when they come. <laughs> You're so cute, oh my gosh. Woo! And that's how most people get their start. And it is a cheaper opportunity. Um, usually chicks at a hatchery will run anywhere from three to $7 from what I've seen this year. So probably your cheapest option to, uh, to start a flock of your own is to incubate your own eggs. So if you know a farmer that has fertile eggs, uh, sometimes they'll give them to you or you can buy them for a pretty decent price. Generally, it's gonna cost you between one and $2 a chick to do this on your own. And you just need an incubator. The incubator will do most of the work for you, but you kinda do have to know a little bit about what you're, what you're doing in order to successfully hatch some chicks out. Even in the best hatches, the best incubators, you may run into problems. Most people say to allow at least three days to uh, finish your hatch. I had uh, three eggs that started to hatch and then the chicks just gave up and died. So that is a concern if you are hatching your own chicks, if you're someone that's sensitive or if you have kids around and you're trying to hatch out chicks, um, just know that things can go wrong. So that is always a concern. and. Generally speaking, if you hatch out your own uh, chicks, the ones that do survive, the ones that do manage to get out of the eggs are usually a little bit more robust. Okay, so they're gonna be much healthier than the ones you get from a hatchery in general. There's a lot less stress. They go right from, right from the incubator to the brooder. This guy's a little feisty. <laughs> little Americana, whoa. <laughs> and so they just tend to be a little bit healthier in my experience, but you do run the risk again of the, the hatch going wrong. Uh, some people will only end up with one uh, chick that hatched and then it's lonely and then they have to scramble to find an appropriate aged uh, companion for it. So that can always be an issue. Also too, when you are hatching your own eggs at home, uh, expect to have at least 50% roosters. So if you do live in an area where you can't have roosters on your property, have a plan. Just definitely have a plan for that because at minimum half of your hatch will likely be roosters. So if you hatch out 12 eggs, figure on six roosters and that can be a problem for a lot of people. So that is a major con for people for incubating your own eggs. It is the cheapest option, but it does come with some issues. 
So the second option that a lot of people go for is to order from a hatchery. <laughs> One of the good things about a hatchery is that uh, you can usually get what you want. Um, as far as breed goes, you can be very specific. And most hatcheries will be able to sex your birds for you. So if you cannot have roosters, if you're looking just for hens, you can order pullets. Now, the issue with this is that um, sexing birds is an art form and even the professionals sometimes get it wrong, okay? That's just how it is. <laughs> the equipment that these birds have is just so tiny um, that vent sexing is, is not always 100% accurate. And most hatcheries will go ahead and give um, accuracy with a 90% uh, accuracy rate. So if you order 10 chicks, 10, 10 pullets, you can expect Sometimes you'll get the 10 pullets, uh, sometimes you might get one rooster, and that does fall within that 10% um, deal. So these are all, um, if you can see some of them, they're uh, buff and lavender Orpingtons that I did actually order from a hatchery out in Missouri. I got quite a few of them. A lot of them are gonna be part of my breeding program. Since we just started our breeding program, we wanted to make sure that we had enough. And these are, these were hatched August 16th. So they're almost, on Wednesday, they'll be three weeks old. So one of the benefits of having older chickens, older chicks, is that you can usually get a sense of the sex. Okay, these were all supposed to be pullets, but I can already tell, I'm trying to find one here. I can already tell that some of them are looking like roosters. Okay, and I ended up uh, ordering 50 chicks I ended up ordering 50 chicks and so I can expect probably five roosters out of this batch for the 10% accuracy rate. And I've already seen a few that might be roosters. Like I said, I'm trying to find one for you that's a little bit more obvious. Alright. Easy buddy. Easy buddy. So this is one that I think might be a rooster. He, this guy is, and it, it might still be a pullet, but I, I seriously doubt it. Um, at almost three weeks of age, you can see that it's already starting to develop a comb. As opposed to, as opposed to this one. This is one that I, this is one that I think is a pullet. If you look at its face, you can see that the comb is not quite as developed. So we have a likely rooster and a likely pull it. You can also see he's a little bit more feisty than the little lady here. So another issue with your uh, day old chicks from a hatchery is the fact that they just might get the sex wrong. You might spend the money and get um, what you think are all females because that's, that's gonna work for your neighborhood only to find that between three and four weeks of age, oh crap. Some of these are dudes. I can't keep them, especially once they start crawling. But that That is one of the cons with ordering chicks from a, a hatchery and getting them through the mail. The other big con about ordering chicks from a hatchery and, um, and getting them through the mail is oftentimes you have uh, hatchery minimums, okay? So if you really only want six chicks, you might have to order 25 chicks just to make the minimum. So unless you have a lot of friends that want the same kind of chicks, you're gonna get stuck with 25 chicks and some of them might be roosters that you can't keep. So that is definitely an issue and something to think about uh, when you're ordering from a hatchery. Yeah, chicks in general are very fragile. So if you are um, ordering from a hatchery, figure they're in the mail, hopefully being handled correctly, but you never know, they could get stuck on a dock in the cold, you don't know. Out of the 50 chicks that I ordered from the hatchery, one was almost dead when it arrived. Uh, it was still alive and managed to hang on for two days before it did die. And then three chicks that seemingly in the brooder were healthy. They were eating, they were drinking, they were running around, everything seemed fine. They just killed over dead. You know, the first week just took them out. After the first week, everyone else has been pretty healthy and everything's going great but that is definitely a concern with um, very young chicks. They're just so fragile. So that's why chicks might not be your best option for starting. Uh, the third option to uh, start a backyard flock, and the one that I personally recommend the most if you live in a place where you know that you cannot have roosters, is to get them to lay pullets or start the pullets. 
Can you stop eating me? <laughs> These chicks are pecking at me. <laughs> to find started pullets, you're gonna wanna look um, at some of your local farms and hatcheries. So I guarantee you there are some local hatcheries in your area or local chicken farmers who might be willing to spare a few hens for you. Um, if you are local to South Jersey or Philadelphia, you can check out Dragonway Farms. We are local to you. And uh, we do have started pullets starting in February. So what a started pullet is, is going to be a hen between five and seven months old that is ready to start laying any time. And um, the benefit of getting a started pullet is that you know 100% without a doubt that you are getting a female chicken, no roosters. So if you can't have roosters, this is gonna be a great option for you. Uh, the second benefit to getting a started pullet is someone else has already put in the work with a fragile chick. Okay, they've already brooded it for you. They've already taken care of any issues that might come up. Basically weeded out the, the weak, the ones that just wouldn't make it. You don't have to deal with that kind of heartbreak. So they've done the work to do that for you. And, and you end up with a, a healthy, almost adult chicken that you can just put right out into your coop and within a week or two should start laying. So if you guys want to, if you guys are local to New Jersey, to South Jersey specifically, and you are looking for to start a flock next year, uh, check us out www.dragonwayfarm.com um, for your started pullets. We'll have some available in February of several different breeds. kind of show you how friendly buff orpingtons are this one has decided to fall asleep on my leg and these guys they're just pecking they 